Welcome to another episode of Will It Work? I'm Kevin, and today we're looking at the Sega Dreamcast. And this box that you see right here is the original Japanese uh, Dreamcast box. Uh, I had originally bought a uh, Japanese model as soon as it came out from Japan, and I got a whole lot of extras with it initially. Um, it was a big purchase for me at that time, uh, but... Uh, um, I was, you know, think, thinking like Sega probably had a pretty good system here as, you know, as the next generation coming off of uh, the Saturn not having done so well. They, you know, they seemed like they had some good ideas here. They had a modem uh, option for it. Um, you know, it was a smaller form factor. Uh, they were doing some interesting things with the smart controller. And so, you know, I, um, I, I bought in on it. And, uh, you know, overall it was a, it was, you know, in the United States, it's considered, like, it sold over 5 million units. And so it's considered to be, like, you start to make your money back when you sell over 5 million. So in the United States, it did well enough um, before they had uh, ultimately canceled it. Uh, it's just that in Japan and, and uh, probably in Europe, um, sales just weren't as good. Uh, and mainly, you know, it, they did well in the United States because of the sports line. The, you know, the 2K sports was a big deal. They even released a sports and an NFL 2K version of the Dreamcast. And, you know, the NFL and, and basketball and things at that time weren't a big deal in, in these other countries. I don't even know if it is now, but uh, it certainly wasn't then. And so, um, unfortunately, you know, it didn't work out for Sega like they had hoped. Um, Sony at that point just had so much momentum coming off of the original PlayStation that, uh, you know, PlayStation 2 was just going to, you know, inevitably be the dominant system. But, uh, so I have a lot of Sega stuff, and I thought we could just kind of look at it a little bit here. This video will be a little bit longer than the usual one, since I have a lot of this. And, and in case you're wondering, I do have a lot of um, uh, PlayStation gear as well, PlayStation 2 gear, as well as PlayStation gear. And when we get to those, uh, I will do the same thing. So it's not just... Uh, um, you know, just for the Dreamcast. I just happen to have a lot of miscellaneous Dreamcast stuff. The Xbox, I had a few things, uh, but not as much. I mean, the Xbox was, it just didn't have a lot of peripherals. You know, it did have a light gun and, you know, controllers and stuff, but it just didn't have all of the the um, the gadgets and gear that the, uh, the Dreamcast had. So, <clears throat> this one uh, does not have the modem in it, and it is indeed the uh, Japanese one. It is NTSC-J. So this is the first one I had. And um, at one point I think I had like five Dreamcasts. But there's some story that goes behind that. I didn't actually like purchase full price. There was this weird like, you know, when this came out, I think it was around 2000, and there was that bubble going on in the, in the market um, where uh, everything was... Um, like, all these companies in tech were, like, spending money on becoming, like, the next thing, whatever the next thing was. And there was a store, an online store, that was selling video games and consoles for, like, in crazy, like, cheap prices, right? So you could, at that time, get an entire Dreamcast for $99, which was about a third of what it cost right at that time when it first came out. Got a lot of bits of rubber band and plastic here. I was working on some stuff earlier to try to fix up one of the consoles I'm I'm work I'm going to eventually show. Um and uh yeah, so um with the with the Dreamcast then it it uh they were selling them for 99 bucks and it was a complete thing. So I was like give me 3 of those, you know, cuz I I'll, I'll drop full price for one if I get 3. And the, and the thing was with it is that like they were like, well, you know, we're going to have to send them to you when we have them in stock cuz we don't have them in stock right now, which Obviously, they were selling so many of them. And I kind of blew it off. I never thought about it or anything. And I don't even know if they charged me. I don't think they did. Uh, and, like, literally, like, four or five months later, I had forgotten all about this place. Uh, in the mail, I got a box, and inside were three Dreamcasts. It's crazy. I ended up reselling them. And we have the House of the Dead still sitting in the drive. That's not good. Um, but it, it must be the, uh, Japanese version. I'm thinking. Yes, made in Japan, NTSC-J. So it's the Japanese version. 
I do have the box for this, so I will probably swap it out. So, uh, I just have the Japanese console in that box. No foam, no nothing else. I was just separating them. Uh, so, that one box is actually in really good shape. It's just, there's nothing else in it is, uh, other than the console. Uh, so then I have... These things are all a little bit heavy. I have the Americanized Dreamcast box that you see here. Uh, and let's open it up. And this is NTSCU. Probably stands for US. I don't know if they had like Canadian version of Sega Dreamcast or something. I don't really know. Some plastic. This probably has all of the stuff in it. And standard music CDs. You can play music CDs. Everybody. Does anybody still play music CDs? So we got a controller. I'll show you that in a second. A lot of these things are going to be dusty and dirty, even after being in these boxes for so long. Yeah, so we got some, got some cardboard, which we don't really need. Some plastic that these things should be wrapped up in. Take care of that after this. We have a Nintendo 64 instruction book. So when I get to the Nintendo 64, we'll look at that, I guess. Uh, so here we've got the... American, this one is a lot more used, because I use this one a lot, a lot dirtier. Uh, and it has the actual modem in it, because they would sell it in two versions, in Japan anyway, with modem and without modem. And uh, since you couldn't use the modem in the United States, um, where I had ordered it from was just like a was just like a crapshoot, whether you'd get one with or without the modem or not. And I believe they do sell a, um, well, they did, but I'm pretty sure, you know, if you spend $1,000 on it or something, you can get a, um, a LAN one, one that plugs into the LAN. I'm not sure. I may have even have bought one of those at one time. Well, they were really expensive even when they came out. Let's see if there's a game in here. There is not. Okay. The only bad thing about the Dreamcast is it didn't play DVDs, which... Probably would have really helped it. It really helped Sony in the beginning, but uh, it didn't, and so there you go. So these controllers are this controller is a little dirty, but we'll take a look at it here. So this is the original controller, right? And uh, people didn't like this too much. Uh, there were complaints. It did function fine. Um, it's just that it was really kind of big, although. Like the inside part, it's it's narrower than you think. Like if you if you had like, you know, DualShock controller right here, and you were playing, it, it feels comfortable. Like if we look at the um, the original like like the well that's not an original, but if we look at this Pelican Xbox controller, right, it's even fatter on the sides than um, the the Dreamcast one. So, or if we look at the uh, Nintendo um, Wii. Uh, Pro pad, see how it's thicker lengthwise here. So it wasn't a problem of, I think, of reaching any of these buttons um, because it was really closed in. It's just that it, it was a problem with this. Uh, it didn't have built in rumble. Ooh, these things really need cleaning. What in the world? And um, so you had to buy these rumble packs, which I have and I'll show you. And you had these rather heavy memory cards. So you have all this bulk in there. And then the wire comes down from the back rather than up here on the top because that space is being occupied. You got your D-pad start button, you have your analog stick, and uh, no bumpers. No bumpers, but you do have triggers. And you can kind of hear that. It's kind of chewing right there. Or it should be more like this. So that one's probably a little beat up. Uh, and you got your uh, standard knob that people would trip over constantly. And then we've got the, this is also in need of cleaning and probably a battery for sure, uh, the VMU, which um, I will, what was it, take a 2032? So I could probably switch it. This is my Gamera one. 
Uh, the memory card itself, there's nothing special about it, but I think it has a mini game of uh, Gamera from Godzilla on it. Um, and, uh, you know, you would normally just slide that in here like this, and then, you know, it would give you a little bit of a readout on here. And the only thing I really found that useful for uh, was uh, for football games. So you could choose your plays without the other player seeing what you were doing. 2K Sports makes a lot of sense. Because other consoles, you, you're sharing the screen, you can see what they're going to pick. So not cool. So I have a uh, Nyko uh, version, right? It has a turbo button, slow. Um, also took two controls. Triggers are better. It's pretty loose. D-pad. Got, you know, the two extra buttons here. And I'm not even sure why. C and Z. <laughs> you know, they're probably programmable set, probably something like that with Nyko. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's a third-party controller. Let's see what else I got here. So, yeah, one of the things I bought when I bought the Japanese version was uh, one of the games that had originally come out for it was Poppin' Music. And I think I'm probably one of, like, three people in the world that have the uh, original... Uh, 1999 Dreamcast pop and music controller. I, I'm I'm kidding, of course, but I doubt very many of these sold, especially anybody in North America buying it because it was kind of like Rock Band uh, before there was Rock Band sort of thing. The the musical notes would go up the screen and you would hit the right colored button rather than the um, strings on the guitar, and that was um, you know. That was a game, and it wasn't it wasn't very popular here. I don't even know if it was popular there, but uh, Konami made it probably off of their Dance Dance Revolution, um, you know, process because that was very similar. And they just, um, uh, yeah, it just whatever. I bought it. I think I played it once, literally. I was like, well, yep, that's not a game for me. Sorry, I wasted my money on it. I have the uh, House of the Dead two box set. And it came with the gun, so that is uh, handy to have. And we'll take a look at the game. I don't think I'll be able to use it off the computer, of course, but uh, we'll take a look at it and see um, its bad acting and everything that makes it kind of funny. But the box is in good shape. Uh, and then I have the gun. This also has a VMU in it here. Just a regular one, uh, and again, these VMUs are used for you know memory in games. So it would like keep your spot. You, know, you had a control here with two buttons and the trigger. This gun worked really well. It it, it actually works really good. It, it makes a really great uh, House of the Dead experience when you have the light gun uh, and everything. My brother, you know, he would later get something that um, allowed him to have a machine gun in the game or something. So I don't know. He was kind of big in the Dreamcast as well. I have a uh, VGA box, um, which will run the Dreamcast out to VGA, which, uh, handy, right? You know, HDMI would be better, but I, I do have uh, VGA to HDMI converter boxes, so that's cool. Um, and um, have the Gamera, there's a Gamera rubber toy in there flying turtle from the Godzilla movies or whatever. And uh, this would just hold the memory card. The lid of the memory card is still in there. And like I said, there's like a Tamagotchi game where he, he starts out small and you grow him into like the the flying turtle or something. And, and the idea was is that you would... I think there were other ones that were sold. And then you could like, um, you know, you plug them into each other and then you could attack, you know, have like a little monster battle or something. But the graphics on the VMU were so rudimentary. Um, nobody got, I don't think anybody really got into it. So there's another third-party controller. I won't unravel it or anything. Um, not sure who makes this here. Quantum. Yeah. Just Quantum, I guess. Um, another D-pad. Some extra auto button, etc. program, and... And, you know, got the six buttons instead of the four again. And uh, you have these sort of slide things rather than triggers, you know. Um, I think this controller, if I recall, I liked this controller at first. 
Um, but then it, um, you know, it's, it started to F up. It probably could just be unscrewed and cleaned. Um, you know how it is. When you're young, though, you don't really think about, like, taking them apart and cleaning them or anything. You're just kind of like, uh, you know, whatever. Oh, this one's really dirty. Uh, this is a Mad Cat's. Uh, it also has a VMU in it, and it has the rumble pack. So this is what they call the, um, oh, this had a name. Is it on here? It had a goofy name. Like, I can't remember it now, but um, it's just the rumble pack. That would give you just vibration. So you had that big thing in there. It's not really that heavy. It's just awkward, you know? It's so big. And uh, that was part of the problem with the um, uh, original... Xbox was uh, the controller had that same idea of having these things slide in and out and, um, for these modules and you know it just didn't um, it didn't work out so another six buttons d-pad one of these mad cats I have don't actually work <clears throat> same same one so one works and I think one is Again, probably just needed for rehab, you know. So there was a pretty healthy aftermarket of controllers and things. Probably didn't help Sega any. Uh, <clears throat> then we have the uh, fishing controller um, for the bass fishing game. We always used to joke about this one because uh, you know the girlfriend comes home and sees you using the fishing controller. That's the end of the relationship. Um, but it works actually pretty good if you use it in the game. Uh, you know, you toss you know, your arm, and it, like, throws the, the hook out there, and you can reel it in, and all that kind of stuff, um, kind of interesting, and then I have two of these, which also are dirty, everything here needs to be cleaned, I swear to God, um, these are really nice, minus the rust goop, or whatever that is on there, um, these are micro switch arcade fighting sticks, uh, that are like arcade quality. Like, um, you know, if you were in the street fighter two or whatever, or any of those other Capcom versus Marvel or whatever, this, this was amazing. And I think it only came out in Japan. Um, but these buttons are all, you know, arcade quality. You can still slide the VMU in here. And, um, it's nice and heavy. It's got, like, a steel back. Um, yeah, HKT 7300. So I bought two of those, too, when I initially bought the system, because I was really into fighting games, and I was like, you know, I'm going to, um, totally get those, because those look amazing. And, and they're great. They're great. Unfortunately, like, at that time in my life, when I bought this, uh, I was working second shift, and I was working, uh, I was living up in Lakewood, and my friends that were in the fighting games, uh, like, Don Cease and such, um, if you've ever listened to the radio show, uh, he just wasn't, he wasn't around, man, he lived, you know, too far away, and he got to get up early in the morning and stuff like that, so hardly ever got to use those joysticks, they've mostly not seen any life, uh, so there's a Sega Dreamcast mouse, which was good for the online web service at the time, at one point, my brother, he had, uh, no internet, um, he had no computer at home, uh, they just, you know, they, computers were still, like, expensive, and, uh, you know, if you wanted to get on the web, you needed, like, a $2,000 computer or whatever. Most people were not buying, like, a $2,000 computer. It was, like, a major purchase for a lot of families to buy a computer that uh, could get online, and, um, you know, people were slowly getting them, and prices were coming down, and there were these budget systems that were coming out, etc., but it was still, a, it's still an issue, you know, for people that were, you know, not making uh, good money, just making survival money, right? And so my, um, so even like, um, I think Microsoft came out, was it Microsoft? Well, somebody came out with web TV and that was like a, you know, a standalone box that you would hook up to a modem and you, I think you would pay some sort of subscription fee and then you would, um, you know, uh, be on the web and, and you could browse the web with it and, and watch, you know, TV while you were browsing and stuff. It never really caught on. But it was around, and I ended up buying, like, three of those and distributing those to some of my friends to get them on the web. Like, Don Anderson, I gave one to. I think I gave him two of them. Uh, I think I gave him the one that my, my brother had at one point or something. 
um, or somebody else had it and gave it back to me. I gave it to Don. Don gave it to one of his friends. Yeah, my brother had one, and then they were going to buy another one, and, and because his girlfriend and him both wanted to be online at the same time, didn't have a computer, and I said, well, why don't you buy a Dreamcast? Because it costs about the same money at that point. You can get a keyboard and a mouse. You can get online with it, plus you can play all the Dreamcast games. And that's exactly what they did, and they were pretty in the Dreamcast uh, for a while, simply because uh, it was letting them get online, and also because, you know, they were able to um, uh, play games on it. Uh, and then I have the uh, Mad Cat's uh, PS2 keyboard adapter, so you could plug in any old keyboard into it if you want to. <clears throat> Alright, so in terms of games, I don't have a ton of games. I probably either gave them away or sold them, but uh, you can look at them really quickly. not seem to have I have the microphone for Seaman, but I do not have the there's a memory unit type of thing that plugs into the top so you can talk into the microphone and uh, I don't have that so I'm still missing some things that I probably will find eventually but it's no big deal uh, so game wise let's see when well, we have the web browser not that exciting. It probably doesn't work anymore. Uh, we have the House of the Dead 2, which we've already looked at, but let's see if there's a game in here. There's not. Looks like it got a little bit of humidity or whatever. Maybe some water damage. Though I don't know how water would have gotten on there. Uh, we have Monaco Grand Prix Racing Simulation. And this one's just for comedy. Uh, my brother and I are notoriously terrible at racing games especially F1, and so it would just be funny to uh, play this. Um, I think it is also, yeah, a Japanese game, so it was only playable on the, uh, you know, unless you modify it, but it, the uh, Japanese version. Uh, Fantasy Star Online. Funny thing about Fantasy Star Online is that I had paid for the online service of this, and I was, I really liked this game, and I was playing it online with friends, and eventually, you know, I canceled it or whatever and uh, um, went on to eventually get an Xbox. And when I got to Xbox, it wouldn't allow me to sign up on Xbox Live uh, when that started because I had, for some reason, Fantasy Star Online uh, had done something to hang up my account with Microsoft. I guess they were using the same sort of, um, you know, uh, service or something to make it work. And I had to actually talk to a technician over the phone. It was like right before Xbox launched. Because I had a press or a media version of Xbox that they gave to media. And so I was able to talk to an engineer. And, and they figured out what the problem was. And, and he had fixed it. And he was telling me how it was related to Fantasy Star Online. Doubt that works anymore. Might. Doubt it. Um, this is some sort of like music generator thing that's like I think it was like a pack-in um, you know this is the case for the web browser but this is generator playable bits and clips it was nothing of importance um, we have the Seaman game which is where you raise the weird Japanese head fish and uh, he'll, you can talk to him with the microphone and he'll ask you some sort of yes no question kind of kind of things throughout um and then uh at the very end he will um he'll talk to you and uh he'll tell you all about yourself in some weird fortune telling kind of way which most people never get to um because it's uh painful ah so here it is so i do have the thing for the microphone everything's got this orange it must have been like a leaker of some sort with the rust or something I'm not sure. We could take a look at Seaman for a minute. Although I think it'll all just be... Um, uh, there will just be eggs. There won't be anything. It's like you got to keep Seaman going for like a month or something before anything like even happens in the game or whatever. It's not even really a game. It's like a simulation. So we have Street Fighter Alpha 3. We can take a look at that. That was a used one, I think, from like a game exchange or something. 
property of Hollywood video. Yeah, Hollywood video until they like, you know, throw those in the dollar bin. And they're like, anybody want those? We have uh, Biohazard 2 from Capcom's Japanese uh, version. We have a Dreamcast Magazine uh, slip, although I don't know, I think this is, yeah, it's just marked CD7, so I don't think that's anything. Uh, of course, Sonic Adventure, just in a slip. This came out, it was one of the launch titles, and it was buggy, but it was pretty, you know, when you got to the, when you got to the course part, where you were, like, doing the actual runs, that, that, that was really fun. The city stuff... It was weird, but they did do some innovative things. Like, if you were online and it became Christmas or whatever, they would decorate the whole town as Christmas. These things weren't happening until that point. Like, it was it was really new. We have another special Sega Dreamcast game disc. Um, so, that's about it in terms of games and, and things that I have on hand anyway. So, let's um, plug them both in one at a time. Uh, we'll play a, a little bit of each one and see... Um, how the graphics compare to what we're used to seeing today and um, yeah and we'll go on from there okay so we got our Dreamcast this is the American console uh, it's like 112798 is probably when it came out. Uh, and that sounds good to me. So this Mad Cat's controller is. Let's make sure it's plugged in right. That's the VMU com complaining. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's working. This is the magazine disc. Figured I'd just put this in first if anything went wrong or it got scratched up. Nobody would cry too much about the official Sega Dreamcast magazine going bad. Although it also probably has a selection of demos. We could take a quick look at a couple of things and see. Um, so it gives us the web browser, which is kind of cool, I guess. Super Boom, Tread Troopers, Space Race. Super Runabout, Star Lancer, Kiss. Let's look at Kiss. Following is a playable demo of a game which at the time of the publishing is still in development. Therefore, this demo may not accurately reflect the final product. Now loading. Everything here needs some soap and water and a good wash, that's for sure. Gathering of Developers, God Games. Kiss, you only have five lives to complete the level, so be wary and good luck. Well, it's good to see that the unit is working and it's loading everything, and it sounds about as good as it did when I originally had it. Let's uh, pick a new game here and go. Who misses load times? Who misses the loading screens? Weren't they fun? You could get up and get a beverage. You could go get some snacks. Maybe talk on the phone for a few minutes. While you're waiting for things to load. I mean, to be fair, demos sometimes take longer because they're not optimized. But, uh, yeah, I don't miss these days. Nope. All right, so let's take a look at this and how this functions graphically. I and mean, as I can check this controller out, I may have to switch controllers as I go. Whoa. Oh, oh, all these different weapons.
What's going on with Kiss? It's just some crazy stuff. So, um, hmm, how do I move forward? That just makes me look up and down. It makes me jump. Oh, it's a button thing. Okay. Okay, so I'm not used to the, uh, I'm not used to the, um, up-down controls here. Pushing forward. I wonder if we can change the controls around. It's like you can see that met, met up there. You can see like game setup view, but you don't actually get to do anything. It's continue or quit. That's nice. Whoa! Oh, this is gonna suck. Well, it's, it's also these controls are just wonky on me here. All right, so let's get out of that. Could have looked at Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, or, uh, Army Men, Sarge's Heroes. But we won't. Let's take a quick look at uh, Sonic Adventure. You guys can see what I'm talking about. Actually, this may not work. This might just be the Japanese version. But let's see what it says. It might be like, this is meant for a different Dreamcast. Not your Dreamcast, Kevin. A different Dreamcast. Yeah, this is yeah, this is the old uh, menu, so it doesn't re recognize it. All right, so let's open her up. I'll have to check that one out when we switch to the Dreamcast on the other side. And the power cords don't match between the two consoles. And they're not they're not um, power bricks or anything. They're just standard, you know, cords. Uh, but one has a flat end, one has a rounded end. And I think that might just be because um, they didn't want Americans to plug it in backwards or something. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3. Yeah, and the Dreamcast did a pretty good job with uh, 2D fighters. It uh, it had, you know, the, the Saturn had this legacy of doing a good job with them as well, and so it was sort of a natural evolution to get uh, to get these working uh, well on the Dreamcast um, right out of the gate. The PlayStation did not uh, um, have a uh, a good time with it because it just didn't have enough memory. It's all it really came down to. It wasn't, the tech, it wasn't like the technology was difficult. It just didn't have a great memory. So it spent most of its time in the um, 3D fighters, Tekken and such. Let's be Blanca. This is always good for a laugh. Watch me get my ass kicked because I haven't played this in about 25 years. So this does work with the extra two buttons that the regular Dreamcast controller does not. All those buttons are doing is mapping the triggers to the uh, to those two buttons so that to make fighting games more pure, which is nice. The 
gonna smack you, smack you down. Hey, I did a, I did a special move. How about that? I remembered my block of electrocute you ass jumping over me. I couldn't tell you any of the other ones. He had some sort of like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Guile was always really difficult to beat in the arcade. If you got a guy playing Guile, because he had that li he had that like one pixel reach advantage on that low kick, and then he had that. If you got into his perimeter, he had that sort of undefeatable super kick and um so the combo is just really difficult to uh you could maybe do it with like 10 or something where you could do like a dragon uppercut or whatever the heck it's called and uh and take him down anyway all right so we got an idea what that's like everybody's seen a 2d fighter before there's nothing nothing amazing here but uh yeah this controller is working pretty good so i'm going to switch this controller out that's the Mad Cats controller. We'll put that one away. <clears throat> With its rumble pack. Who needs rumble packs? What year is this anyway? Put the rumble in the game controller. Try this other Mad Cats controller to see what kind of status it is in. Uh, generator playable bits and video clips. Includes demos for software not yet rated. Can look at it. a swirl that we made that's our logo is a swirl it's like a horror comic it's like a horror manga don't look into the spiral <clears throat> yeah I think this is just uh, another demo disc let's see what we've got on it though I remember they used to make things like this, like PC Gamer or something. You said Coconut Monkey, and you used to get the CD, and Coconut Monkey was like the mascot, and then you would um, get to see different things. Hey, look, bass fishing. Let's look at football, because this was kind of its namesake. Uh, you know, it was very popular in the United States because of football. I wasn't a big football guy, but I would play this with my friends. Donnie liked to play football. Uh, probably still does. I just wasn't that into it. So who are all these guys? I don't know who all these guys are. These teams. What are we doing? I understand the rules of football, though. I mean, I, I, I've played enough video games in my life that I know, like, you know, how to pick an offense and a defense and throw the ball and all that kind of stuff. But I just never really followed the sport. Just never really interests me. And it was weird. It was because, like, you know, um, Electronic Arts, like, in a lot of ways, Electronic Arts, I think, was responsible for Sega um, kind of getting out of the console industry. Like, if you wanted to blame it on something, you could say, like, well, maybe it was, you know, Sega's business choices and all this sort of stuff. But Electronic Arts, you know, they were really big, you know, really, really important games, and they still do. And uh, when the Genesis came out, uh, you know, Electronic Arts uh, didn't pay any royalties to Sega um, to release their games. They had um, reverse engineered the cartridge technology in the Genesis and sold games without licensing anything from uh, Sega. So they were able to skirt around paying Sega to release their games. And then, you know, uh, and then when it came time, you know, for um, Dreamcast, uh, you know, they just didn't have a good relationship with Sega at that point, and they, you know, for 
I don't know whose reason it was. Electronic Arts not wanting to support Sega or Sega not wanting to work with Electronic Arts. But, you know, there were no Electronic Arts titles for the Dreamcast. Um, you know, they were going to be on PlayStation, which, you know, really also hurt uh, Sega um, because, you know, Electronic Arts was a, a major factor in gaming. I mean, you know, you could have got more titles and things like that. People wanted to play certain games. You only got them on... Uh, All right, so this is just like, I don't even know. Like, let's just look at this car racing thing, and then we'll move on. So, yeah, I mean, so in a weird way, Sega, Sega's demise was uh, at least partially due to Electronic Arts not wanting to pay them royalty fees. And the weird thing was is that, like, Nintendo had a very similar royalty fee situation. Like, and, the, and I don't necessarily blame Electronic Arts for doing this. I mean, one of the problems was was that, like, um, you know, according to Trip Hawkins, when he was in charge of uh, Electronic Arts, the way Sega and Nintendo handled their um, third parties at that time was that they were like, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to make the game... And then you're going to give the game to us. We're going to decide. We're going to decide how many to produce, and we're going to um, decide. And then we're going to send them to you. Then you can figure out how you're going to distribute them, and you're going to make like half your money on them or something like that. So it was like you weren't allowed to make more than they wanted you to make, and they decided the timing uh, on the game, and you had to make the game before they even decided if uh, you were going to um, be able to sell it. So uh, there's, these terms are terrible, and, and they really were well workable. And I don't know, I think maybe in the 8-bit era, Electronic Arts was only still doing PC games. They weren't doing anything for the NES or um, uh, the Sega Master System, etc., that I'm aware of, that I, you know, maybe late in the game they did. Um, but then they, um, as far as I know, on the Super Nintendo, I mean, does anybody remember Madden on the Super Nintendo or anything? I don't. I mean, maybe it existed. I just don't remember it. So um, maybe they just didn't work with, they didn't reverse Nintendo's Super NES at all. They just reversed Genesis. I don't know. But that's that whole thing with that notch on the side of their cartridges that allowed them to uh, get around... Um, uh, their, uh, some of their patents and things. It's really crazy. Um, so, you know, all that money that, you know, Sega could have had off of that, um, you know, went away. But whose fault was that? Was it Sega not wanting to negotiate fairly? I don't know. Oh, yeah. This is like Monaco. This stuff's the worst. How do I even, like, do I press start? What, what am I doing? Yeah, the worst thing about these, uh, these games is that, like, you need to use your brakes. And who wants to use brakes? Like, you just want to hold down the accelerator and go, you know? It's like you just bash into a wall or something. I think mean, like racing games, you play online, everything has to be so precise uh, because everybody's mastered the, the, the track to the nth degree. Everybody plays like the fastest car and the most, you know, uh, perfect route. And you're just basically shaving milliseconds off of it if the wind is right that day for you. This is just boring and terrible. All right, let's get that out. <laughs> but, you know, overall, I mean, if I had better games to show you guys, it would be a little bit more interesting, I guess, you know. Um, and most of the good stuff I have is on the Genesis, or I mean on the... Um, Japanese side. So we'll flip over to the Japanese side real quick. We'll take a quick look at that. I'll just show you a couple of things of that, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. 
because uh, it looks like at least the American console is working fine. Uh, so let's switch over to the Japanese side and we'll see what it looks like. Hang tight. All right, so here we are now with the Japanese console, and then it is asking me to set the date and time. I put in uh, House of the Dead. Doesn't sound uh, great. <laughs> But uh, seems to be working. It's certainly louder. But then again, maybe this was just how it was. I can't even remember because I played the American version after so long. I never really went back to the to the uh, Japanese one. Now you know the Dreamcast is set up to use composite rather than RF, so maybe the gun will work. I don't know. We'll try. Turn the game music up a touch. Let's see, it might not work though. Let's find out. The house of the, the house. The acting in this is great. It's like should have got an Oscar or something. Yeah, that's not good. Now, it might work if I hook it up composite to composite, but um, the way it's set up right now, it's just no way. But that's okay. I mean, that was kind of expected. I'm just glad to see everything's working and running. Let's, um, let's switch that out. Considering, you know, this came out in 98, and that's, you know, exactly when I had this. Uh, it's quite old. We're, we'll spare everyone the Monaco Grand Prix sim. And so that will just leave us with uh, Sonic and Biohazard 2, Resident Evil 2. So let's take a quick look at Sonic. Well, that loads up with the gun away. Try out the Nyko controller. <clears throat> Dream Master. That's where I have some other Dreamcast games around. Um, but uh, at least I think I do. I mean, I certainly owned many more. Um, but I was also one of those types of people that just gave things away when I was done with playing them. This didn't really f feel like, you know, uh, I was going to make a big collection of video games. You, you, can only co you can only collect so many things that have so much junk. Yeah, you know, the reason I bought this, now that I remember this, um, Biohazard, Resident Evil 2, I wasn't that interested in. I was interested in Code Veronica, because at the time that was made exclusively for the Dreamcast. And if you bought Biohazard 2... Um, uh, in Jap you know, the Japanese version, it came with the uh, the preview of Code Veronica. So I have that. We can look at it if it loads. This is just spinning. It's not throwing an error though. I get an orange light. Usually though, you get like a load screen or something. Kill it. Turn it back on.
It may even be this controller. This controller might be waiting for some sort of input from me and it's not getting it. So let me um, switch controllers here and see if maybe I can get a, a different response out of this one. Like I said, I'm not always sure that these controllers are legit. Bad trigger button. That's probably a broken piece of plastic in there or something. Somebody got really excited when they were playing Monaco. Alright, well, there might not be anything wrong with the Nyko, but I'll put it away. We'll try the broken triggered Dreamcast controller. And, um, let's, uh, move on from Sonic. It doesn't seem like it's going to go. It's a little dirty. Not surprised. <clears throat> they do have a disc cleaner. I'm wondering if maybe that would help. And it just may be that the Dreamcast, you know, the, um, the bands maybe are going it's certainly loud. There we go. It needed a little cleaning. So this was a launch title. You know, and uh, or it came like a day after it or something. Um, and it was, you know, if you remember Sonic and the 16-bit era, you know, it was just uh, um, 2D. And then there was maybe there was a, a couple of weird um, Saturn versions of Sonic that uh, were. I don't know. Saturn had a lot of these weird sort of hybrid 2D, 3D games. We weren't always really sure what they were doing over there. And um, this was when they put some real money back into the, the Sonic to uh, sort of make a good launch title with it. I, I think it sort of had mixed results. I think maybe they shouldn't have gone with the whole open world thing uh, and made it so it was... Uh, you know, just, um, the courses, because that's what people really enjoy doing, is playing the courses. The open world was just, like, I don't know what they were doing, making it like an adventure game or something. Alright, we could all look at Sonic Adventures in the old time. Let's just see if it gets to the gameplay. No, I have no idea. I'm probably lucky I could even play this, to be honest with you. No idea. Yeah, like Shenmue. People always talk about that Shenmue. I played that Shenmue. It did some interesting things, but it, it also did some really terrible things. And uh, people look at it with rose-colored glasses, but I don't think most people finish Shenmue because it, it did some things that were really, really boring. So that's the way I can put it. Come on, longest video ever. Can we just skip this, man? You fucking monster. I'm gonna blow your fucking head off. Believe it or not, I'm made of gelatin. Bullets pass right through me. See, you stupid humans. 
Ha ha ha. I made a ballistic gel. You better run in your 70s paneled police car. Look, I'm already dead. I forget what I'm even supposed to do here. head or something. But you know how these are. You do it like three times. Eggman's gonna come out. Hey, See, I can still play Sonic even after 20 some years. And then play it in Japanese, no less. I'd like to get to one of the courses. So what I'll do is I'll pause the game so you're not bored out of your mind. And uh, I'll get to one of the courses. One second. Okay, so here's the uh, the Emerald Coast, which is the this is you know where you just get into like all of Sonic's real speed and and everything. back up. I'm so used to having a right thumbstick to control the camera and that doesn't exist here. And so you gotta like tap the D-pad to do it. So you gotta take your hand off the pad in order to, it's like in the evolution of that second thumbstick just hasn't happened yet. There we go. you know, graphics pretty good. You know what I mean? Giant whale coming at me. This is where I, you know, I, I start talking about like, you know, if you had a controller with two, you know, two, two D-pads, you know, graphically, I really think the Dreamcast could have held its own up against the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2 did have more memory, but it just had a glitch in it that sort of impacted its uh, its color palette and its texturing. 
And the Dreamcast had texture compression, so it just lots of things on it just looked really bright and colorful because it just had a nice full colored power VR chipset that managed to just make things look pretty good. Uh, and but Polygon count, PlayStation 2, far superior. I mean, we all know it. But I'm just saying, like I think I think Sega quit out too early. I mean, they, they were out of money, I guess, but it's uh it's unfortunate because they um I really think this this system had potential, that more potential than it than it got uh, you know used for. Hey, it's not fun, right? Now you can totally, you don't have to keep running full blast like this. I'm just trying to get through it. You can go and collect all the coins and such. If that's what you're into. And then you get here and it's like... See, that's, that's the camera issues that plague this game. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Anyway, we won't keep going, but I was getting close to the end there anyway. Um, so, Sonic Adventure, again, if you had a dual stick system, you could move that camera around. Would have been a lot better of a game for people to play. Uh, you know, it's kind of frustrating. So let's look at Code Veronica, the trial edition, really quick, and that'll be the last thing we look at. Biohazard 2 Value Plus. Sega Dreamcast from Japan. If you are a child, you do not wish to play this game. We call it Biohazard in Japan, in Resident Evil in America. Because Biohazard is a metal band or something. Resident Evil. Ella, Ella. Claire Redfield, all right. City I guess it's loading at the same time, so I guess this is all right. At least it's giving us something while it's loading. It's like I say, when PlayStation first came out, Ridge Racer, when the game was loading, you could play Galaxia. What game should have done that? That was great. What was that? 2, 3K of memory or something? I've ever played Code Veronica all the way through. I've played all the other Resident Evils for the most part all the way through. Um, they mostly became action games later in the series. The first one was really the only one that was remotely spooky. Um, Her name is Claire Redfield. Yeah, I don't think I. I don't know if I played Res, uh, Code Veronica all the way through. This was this was just the demo. I, I think I did own the game at one point, but yeah, I probably didn't play it. The FAA know about the Gatling gun on the helicopter? And they're like, what are you doing with it? Well, my boss wants me to put the put the old uh, 
the gun on there, and, uh, who am I to say no? Well, good point. Can we get to the game? Is that a flashlight or anything? Oh my god. How do I use the lighter, damn it? Jeez, you guys are killing me with these uh, using the start button to select these things. Look, I press start, it moves down there. If I push A, it moves to exit. If I push, what do I got to do here? Push B, X. Push X. Monitor tuning. <laughs> okay. Screen around. All right, that's not helping me get the lighter. No. There. Now can I use it? Thank the Lord. Oh, who's that guy? Carlos, what are you doing here? Hello, come with me. I am mysterious, strong, and handsome. I will help you. But I have a limp. I was stabbed by a zombie. I'm gonna have some pills. Damn it, the pills are empty. Perfect. Go on. Get out of here. This place is finished. I don't all right. Anyway, so Veronica, Dreamcast works. It's a keeper. Sorry this video was so long, but if you wanted a little Dreamcast run through, uh, I wanted to give it to you um, so you could just kind of look at it. Graphics not terrible. I, I think they hold up pretty good for the time. You know, uh, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice transition over um, uh, from the uh, original 32-bit era into the next generation. So. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, next one will be shorter. Thanks.